A young woman uses a Sharpie in a car that's parked next to the pavement. The driver appears to be a bit distracted by a phone call. He then hears the noise and notices what the girl is doing to his car. Totally unaware of the owner's realization, the young woman picks up a lipstick and writes the word idiot in his car's glass. He confronts the girl who's doing it and asks why she's doing that. She says that she's the one who wants to know what he's up to. Angry, he gets out of his car and confronts the young woman, saying that she was trying to ruin his car. She says that it's just to take revenge for the moment when he got her hoodie all dirty and muddy. She then reports how it happened. She says that some minutes ago, she was walking, and then he hit her with his car and made her spill the liquid she was carrying on her clothes. The man tells her that she should be more careful next time and that it's not a sensible idea to carry that around anyway. The young woman says that she can carry what she wants and that he's being totally arrogant because he's the one who nearly drove over her. The arrogant man says that she ruined his expensive luxury car and that they'll have to think about a way she can pay him for the repair. He asks her if she can do him a favor. She asks him what he means by that. The man asks if she can pretend to be his wife for one day. She says that he must be mentally ill to suggest that. The man says that he's going to explain everything. He reveals that he's getting divorced soon and that during the event, his ex-wife will certainly be accompanied by her new partner, which would make him feel very upset. She says that's none of her business. He says that he can give her whatever he wants if money will do. The young woman agrees and says that she's only doing that if he buys her a new sweatshirt. The man says that he's going to offer her something better and that he's ready to buy any new clothing she needs. She shakes his hand and says that it's a deal. One hour later, they walk together in the street, commenting about an appalling situation. The man knocks on the door of what looks like a beauty parlor. The beautician goes outside, greets his old acquaintance, and says that it's a pleasure to finally see him again. He hugs her and praises him. He asks how he can be of help. The young man tells the beautician that he brought that piece of work to see if he could sort her out. The beautician says that he only needs three hours to sort that lass out. The young man says that he's afraid they only have one because he'll be meeting his ex-wife and that he wants that woman to shine for that moment. The beautician says that in that case, he will have to charge him double. The young man says that it's all right for him and pays the beautician. The beautician invites the woman into his salon. He tells the young man to wait outside because he's going to call him as soon as they're finished. The man agrees and says that it's all right then. The beautician takes his client inside. Meanwhile, the man picks up his phone again and calls someone to talk about a meeting once more. Hours later, the woman walks outside with the beautician and her new visual. She stumbles on her way outside. The beautician mocks her, saying that she has to be more careful not to fall flat on her face. The man says that she's looking so gorgeous. The woman says that, to be honest, she's not really feeling comfortable. The man says that she's perfect and that she only needs a final touch. He hands her a tiny box. She opens it up and finds a luxurious necklace. The man says that he's going to help her out. He puts the necklace around her neck and invites her to go with him. The beautician wishes them a good one. Minutes later, on their way to the car, a flower vendor stops them in the street and asks the man if he would like to buy his wife some flowers. The woman says that they're looking fantastic, to be fair. She says that she also used to be a flower vendor, but they weren't as lovely as the one he's selling. The man says that he's going to take all of them. The vendor thanks the man and says that his wife is really lovely. The woman tries to deny it, but the man interrupts her and says that his wife is indeed fantastic and that he's very lucky to have her. The flower vendor wishes them a good day and leaves. The man then asks the woman he met a couple of hours ago about her dreams. She says that she always dreamed of having a family. A big one, because she never really had it. She says that she would always love to wake up in a very cold and foggy morning by the mountains, pick up her palette, and paint them. 
The man smiles. The woman asks why he's laughing at her. He says that he's not laughing at her, but he's just glad to hear about such a wonderful dream. She thanks him and says that his question was really trickier to answer. She says that she doesn't want to be nosy, but she's curious to know what happened between him and his wife. The man sighs and says that his wife left him for his best friend and said he wasn't enough for her. The woman says that it's a very bad situation. She asks if he still misses her. The man says that he really doesn't because his wife never shared the same dreams and ambitions. The woman says that she also wants to know a bit about his own dreams and ambitions. He says that he doesn't really feel comfortable revealing it and that he is only going to tell her if she promises not to laugh. The woman says that she promises and says that she might laugh just a bit. The man says that he dreams about living in the mountains with his family and becoming a carpenter. The woman laughs and asks why she is a carpenter. The man says that he knew she was going to laugh. She says that it's not like that, and that makes it a bit hard to imagine him being a carpenter. He says that it was his childhood dream. He says that unfortunately, his mother and his wife united to force him to become an architect. The woman says that it's a very happy coincidence because her father is a carpenter. The man asks if she's serious and asks her to tell him more about what she thinks about carpenters. The woman laughs. A romantic connection grows, and they nearly kiss each other, but suddenly, a very angry woman approaches to hand the man an envelope. She tells him that's what he asked for and makes it very clear that she doesn't want to be called again outside of working hours. Meanwhile, a couple is waiting for someone. The blonde woman says that it's taking quite some time for them to arrive. Her partner says that it doesn't really matter and that at least she's there. She says that she's really tired. Meanwhile, outside, the couple parks the car and walks to the premises. They arrive at the scheduled location together. The man faces his ex-wife. He puts an envelope on the desk and stares at his ex. The blonde woman mocks her ex-husband and says that she's surprised that he arrived in a decent time and that he always used to be late and claimed to be busy as an excuse. The man greets Rose and Gabriel, his ex-wife and ex-best friend, and tries to introduce the woman standing next to her. The woman interrupts him and says that she's his fiancée, Francie, and says that it's a pleasure to meet them. Francie explains that they had a problem earlier, so that's why they're a bit late. Rose tells Francie that she doesn't understand why she's engaged to that loser, who was never romantic or decent. She says that he's basically useless. Francie says that he changed a lot then because that week he gave her flowers and invited her to Paris. The backstabbing friend says that he's pleased to hear that and wishes them a good trip. Rose tells her partner to shut up. Nancy says that she and her groom-to-be will be married soon and then they will live by the mountains with children. Rose asks how they can be so sure to get married if they've only been hanging out for a couple of months. The ex-husband says that it's time to stop interrogating them. He tells Nancy that she doesn't need to share anything with them. Nancy says that she's all right with it. She says that she loves when her fiancé looks at her in the eyes and shows how much he loves her. She talks about the moments when he touches her with his gentle hands. Gabriel mocks Nancy and says that he's glad to hear about those romantic moments. Rose tells Gabriel to shut up and leave that conversation because he is starting to annoy her with his sarcasm. She tells him to wait in the car. Intimidated, he decides to leave. The ex-husband asks Rose why she's reacting like that. He then instructs Nancy to wait outside as well. Nancy says she agrees and leaves the premises. Now alone, Rose says that she can see that he's really in love with that woman. The ex-husband says that he is indeed and that he wants to finish it for good. Rose asks if he's really sure about it. She says that, to be honest, she owes him a massive apology. She says that if he wants, they can go together to Paris and have children like he always wanted. The ex-husband says that he finds it really incredible that she changed her personality in a couple of minutes. 
he asks what she wants to achieve with that attitude. He remembers her saying that she cheated on him with his best friend and asks why she's pretending to be interested in him now. Rose says that he doesn't believe he's in love with a woman like that. The ex-husband confirms. He signs the divorce papers in front of his ex and leaves. Outside, Nancy sees the man approaching and asks if it's all over. The man smiles and says that it's finally over. Nancy asks if it's time for them to go to Paris. The man says that Paris can wait, suggests that they go out to a restaurant to get to know each other a bit more, and kisses her.